about grade sevens. Helen here today and today that means it's natural sciences and we are doing an assessment task. So we're going to be taking all of the work that we've learned so far about energy transfers. We're going to be finding out how much did you learn and how much can you apply in an assessment situation. So let's begin. Our first question asks us about a Sankey diagram. Now we've learned lots about Sankey diagrams and we've also learned about how to draw them and what information they can give us. So we're told in our question that the diagram shows energy transfers for a light bulb. And it asks us to add in the following labels. We must label the input energy, we must label the useful output energy, we must label our wasted output energy, and then we have to indicate the forms in which each of these kinds of energy, and we have to then answer a question on energy efficiency. So let's begin right at the beginning. We're going to look at this diagram and we're going to try and understand it for ourselves. Here we see the input energy and here because of the direction of the arrow we see the output energy. We can see that some of our output energy, one form of our output energy, is far larger than the other output energy. Now we can go to our data and we can start labeling. Where would we put this label? Input energy of 100 joules. Where do you think that goes? I hope you are looking at the spot and telling me we would put it over here with our input energy. We're going to label it's not in terms of percents, let's be more accurate as to what the question asked us. 100 joules is our input energy. Now, output energy is spread between the useful energy, which is 20 joules, and the wasted energy, which is 80 joules. So how do we know what to label this arrow and what this arrow should be labeled as? Well, this arrow is much wider, so let's put in the larger amount of joules. And so we can label this. Let's take out all our other little scratchings. We can put here output, and this is wasted energy, and we label it at 80 joules, which means that this last arrow up here at the top accounts for our useful energy. So we're going to put here useful output and that is only at 20 joules. So we've completed our first task. Now we have to indicate the form of each kind of energy. Let's use a different color pen to answer this question. What is the input energy? In what form is that input energy for a light bulb? We know that this is electrical energy as our input energy. The useful output, what is the aim of a light bulb? Well, our useful energy output is light energy. And our wasted energy, what is this wasted energy in the form of? It's in the form of heat. You can also use the term thermal energy. We've answered this part of our question. And now finally, we can analyze our drawing and we can say, is the light bulb energy efficient? Well, in terms of efficiency, we need to compare this is what the light bulb is intended for and it's only producing 20 joules of useful energy, but it's wasting 80 joules. So is it energy efficient? We would have to say no, it is not 
energy efficient. And that means we've answered our last question. So this is an example of a test question that you might see that has many different aspects to it. And you see that it's quite simple if you just take your time and you answer it in the order of the questions that are asked. Here's a similar one. I'd like you to try and work slightly ahead of me. The diagram shows the energy transfers for a kettle turned on for three minutes. We need to add in labels of input energy, output energy, and wasted energy. And we're not shown the amounts in this case. In other words, we have to understand how a kettle works. We know that the input energy is going to be 100%. We know that the output energy is going to be in the form of heat energy. That is what we want to do. A kettle is designed to boil water. So our heat energy is going to be our useful energy in this case. Wasted energy, you can all hear when the kettle boils. So the kettle makes sound as wasted energy. But our wasted energy we can see is very small in comparison to our input energy. But we can show here that we've got the output useful energy and here we've got our output wasted energy. Now if we wanted to give these energies percentages, we must look at how many blocks on our diagram made up 100%. So let's do a quick count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So if 100% equals 20 blocks, we now need to show useful energy. Let's count it. But let's do it the easy way. Let's first work out. We've got two blocks wide showing us wasted energy. So two blocks will give us what percentage of energy? And we know here that 18 blocks will give us a different percentage of useful energy. Well, if 20 blocks gives us 100%, we know that two blocks is going to give us 10%. So we can fill that in. And we know then that our useful energy, if we minus 10% from 100%, we're going to get 90% is useful energy. Now we've completed the first part of the task. We must now indicate each kind of energy. How does your kettle work? Well, it says the kettle is turned on. So we're going to, we're going to assume that we're talking about electrical energy. If the kettle was put on gas, on a gas burner or on a fire, we would have been told. Our useful output energy is the heat energy and our wasted output energy is the sound energy. Now we have to determine, is this kettle energy efficient? Out of the 100% of energy we're putting in, 90% of it is useful. So I think we can say yes, our kettle is pretty energy efficient. Now you're given four different Sankey diagrams. We don't know what they are Sankey diagrams of, but all we have to do is identify the most efficient process and the least efficient process. Now, what do we understand by most efficient? We've got to look at the ratio of input energy compared to our useful output energy. 
right? We don't, if, we, if we're going to look at the waste energy, we can also look at it that way. We could say input energy compared to wasted output energy. And something that is going to be most efficient is going to have a high useful ratio to input ratio. Something that is going to be least efficient is going to have a high wasted energy output uh, compared to the input energy. So let's look at diagram A. We've got a wide block showing us wasted energy and a narrow arrow showing us useful energy. And we could even count them. We've got two blocks showing us waste, uh, useful energy, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks showing us wasted energy. In diagram B, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six blocks wasted, and four blocks useful. Let's go to diagram C. We've got one, two, three, four blocks wasted and six blocks useful. And in diagram D, two blocks wasted and eight blocks useful. Now that we've analyzed our diagrams, which is the most efficient? Well, it's going to be the one that has the highest amount of useful energy. And so the process is D. It's got the highest amount of useful energy for the same amount of input energy. Least efficient is going to be the, the system that shows us the largest amount of wasted energy. And that is situation A, where we see that we've got large wasted energy and only a small amount of useful energy. Now, this question is going to test your knowledge not only of Sankey diagrams, but also of the law of conservation of energy. We have got a Sankey diagram that shows us the input, the useful output, and the wasted energy. We don't know what appliance or machine this refers to. It's just a general Sankey diagram. But the question we are asked is, is this process physically possible? So we also have to give reasons. We can't just take a guess and say yes or no. We have to explain why we said yes or why we said no. So the first thing we do is, have we got our arrows in the right direction? Yes, we've got our arrows in the right direction. So it's got nothing to do with the direction of energy transfer. Our input energy is at one, two, three, four blocks. Our useful output energy is at two blocks. Our wasted is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks. Remember, according to the law of conservation, of energy, which shows that energy isn't created or destroyed, we've got four, let's actually write it down here, four equals two plus eight. And two plus eight equals 10. So we've got something that is physically impossible. We've got a smaller amount of input energy and a larger amount of output energy, which means that this process is physically impossible. So the question was, is this process physically possible? No, it is not physically possible. Reasons? We say that we've got a greater amount of output energy compared to our input energy, and you can give values, you could say the input is four blocks, indicating four units, our output is 10 blocks, and this should be equal, so this diagram is not obeying the law of conservation of energy, and therefore this diagram is physically impossible.
I hope that you've learned a little today and that you got all of the questions correct and that you're able to apply your knowledge in an assessment. That's it for today. Grade 7s, I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.